Hi, this is Dennis Feidner with CFO On The Go. Time for another uh, video on Sage 100. Hey, today somebody asked me some questions about the inventory module, and I realized that of the 200 uh, videos I've recorded, I've never done one on inventory, so here we go. So, not everybody's going to need inventory, but if you are stocking things, or if you want to track stock on individual uh, technician's truck, inventory module is, is really perfect for that. So, here we go. I'm going to walk you through pretty much the whole process. I may skip a step or two that doesn't seem important, but um, here's a purchase order. And it happens to be purchase order number whatever here, 6666, whatever. Um, today's date on it, uh, this is who I'm buying them from. Uh, it's a purchase order to buy uh, 10, la 10, 10 foot ladders. Uh, and the account that I want to charge that to my inventory account, pretty simple. So I issue this purchase order to the Home Depot or whatever vendor you choose. I'm ordering this part number, I'm ordering 10, and quoted price is 195. So that's that. The next thing obviously that would happen is inventory is that um, I have order number 6666713. If I put that in there, you'll see that I had already received five of those in, so I can now receive in the additional five. Uh, it's shipping ticket number E234. Uh, it's reviewed status. Uh, I can change the description to uh, ladders. Um, once I do this, e two, three, four, Home Depot, today's date, all I filled in, it's reviewed status, bringing in five ladders. I'm going to receive this in. Just all I have to do is save it. I can print a receipt now to send to AP. So it shows that I have them. I'm not going to do that. I'm done. If I now go to accounts payable, it's pretty slick, by the way. I go to accounts payable you'll see that I now have got an accounting record. And there is the shipping number of E234, the one I just received in for Home Depot with that purchase order number. I use the shipping uh, ticket as the invoice number because that's all I have at this point. Uh, it's now sitting in accounts payable, waiting for the invoice from Home Depot to show up. Once that shows up, I would key in the actual invoice number, change the status from review to open. It will now be sitting in accounts payable, uh, waiting for payment. And so, pretty simple. I entered a purchase order, use the same data to receive it in, use the same data for the purchase for the accounts payable. So, one time keen and three times used. So, pretty slick. Anyway, I'm going to close this. I don't need to keep that. Then, once I have it in inventory, I have a lot of things I can do with it. And so, right now, let's just go ahead and uh, assume that a job has just called in or has come to the office and said, hey, I need, I need a ladder. Uh, for my job. And so I'm just going to put a ticket number in. I'm going to charge it to job number 27. All these other things can stay blank. Uh, the data was approved. All these can be blank. And I'm just going to say ladders. Um, to come down here, I'm going to key in the part number, which is 985-984, which is a 10-foot ladder. And let's just say this job needs two of them. And the average cost is one thirty. Well, that's a nice number, one thirty nine point five, whatever. And so I'm going to charge this job, job number twenty seven, for two ladders, for two hundred seventy nine dollars. And while I'm here, if you're a plumber and you have uh, hot water heaters, furnaces, boilers, and you have serial numbers on that, you can also track the serial numbers from the receipt all the way through. Um, to the final job where they wind up residing. So in this case, pretty simple. I'm going to take this these two ladders from the warehouse. My choices are multiple in this case. I could have them on a vehicle. So I'm just kind of giving you different scenarios here. So if I'm a plumber and I have a bunch of filters on my truck and I'm now going to use five of those filters for a project or a customer, I can take them off of my vehicle. It will reduce the inventory on my vehicle. So I have a, can always run a report of what's available by individual vehicle. Or in this case, they're sitting in the warehouse. So I'm just going to take them out of the warehouse. Close this. Oops, warehouse. They'll come out of my inventory account. Hopefully I can remember that. Uh, and then no destination because they're going to the job. So at this point, I'm going to save this real quick. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here and then pick the job cost code that I want those to go to. And um, 
Job 27, ladders, cost code is going to be 1,000. And we'll use a material cost type. So now I have now charged those uh, to the job. Uh, oh, you know what? Hang on a second. This is going to be uh, 5,001. Oops. Too many zeros. All right, so we got that. We're done. Yep, got that. 279. Cost code 27. Yep, we're good. All right. So anyway, at this point, I'm done. Get rid of that. So I now I've done that. And then within, so I've ordered it. I've received it. I've had it sit in accounts payable. And now I've removed one from inventory and put it back uh I said I've charged it out to a job. I can do the exact reverse. Um, if I go in here, and I'm not going to key this in, but you'll get the concept here. Um, in this case, actually, the destination would be the warehouse. In this case, the source was the warehouse, because that's where it was. If I'm bringing them back from the job, then instead of the source, I just put the destination as the warehouse. So it would credit the job for bringing the two ladders back not a good example, but if they're sending some back from the job, uh, extra bag of concrete or five gallon cans of paint or something like that, and they took out too much, I can actually receive those back in. And instead of the source being the warehouse, the destination is the warehouse. And it actually puts it right back into inventory against that part number. So that's how you would receive it back in. And then there's a whole bunch of reports. Um, if I go into this right here, I'll just show you the transactions uh, and the you have to know the part number or you have to look it up. So I know that it's happened to be smart enough to write it down. Uh, so here is all the transactions for the ladder. I bought four on this date. I received them five on this date and I received five in it on this date. And so I can see that all of the transactions that, are, that occurred with that at that point. If I want to look at inventory ledgers, I can do that. Um, I doubt if any of you use LIPO FIFO, but some of you may. We have that as well. Uh, inventory order report. Uh, so it's a report that will, um, I'm not sure what's going to show up on this because I haven't done much of my inventory. Uh, so give it one second. So in this case, uh, my inventory, when I set it up, said that I always want to have uh, so many in stock. This is how many I have on, on hand, how many are available. Uh, how many are on order and then this is my minimum stocking quantity and a lot of these i don't have minimum stocking quantities on um, let's see if i have one down here give me one second um, i don't uh, but if i had minimum order uh, minimum on hand requirements so i said i have uh, 12 by 24 by one filters i always want to have 20 in stock when it goes below 19 or below 20 down to 19 uh, it will show up on a reorder report uh, what have you so lots of reports in here um, you should be able to find everything you're looking for as far as inventory uh, management. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we really need to look at, but um, and then that job that two ladders will be show up on your job cost report as an inventory uh, transaction uh, in your material cost code. So anyway, hopefully that helps. But it is a full blown uh, estimating. I'm sorry, inventory where we have full inventory reports, inventory locations multiple inventory locations, purchase order receipts, and then an inventory audit, which I'm not going to go into because I haven't, uh, it's going to have a lot of auditors because I don't do physicals and I don't do a lot of things because this is demo data. So I apologize, I can't read it, but it will give you a full inventory audit report as well. So anyway, I appreciate you listening. Uh, it was a little bit longer than I thought. I thought I could do it faster, but I didn't. Anyway, my name's Dennis, company CFO on the go. Uh, phone number is 800-659-5851. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. This should be like video number 201, I think. I've lost track, but I know I'm over 200. So thanks for your time.